disposable vapes are pretty common nowadays. So for today, we'll see what useful parts we can salvage from these things as an electronic hobbyist. So we'll start with the most useful one, which is its battery. So be careful not to puncture its battery during this assembly because LiPo batteries can cause fire or explosion if damaged physically. Now when you have access to its battery, next thing to do is to test its capacity if it's enough for electronic projects. So you'll need a capacity tester for that, like this ZB2L3 module which you can get for less than $2. And with a discharge current of 200 milliamps, I got 475 milliamp hour with this one, which is still acceptable because battery capacities decreases every charge and discharge cycle. While the other one got around 583 milliamps hour. So its capacity seems low, but it's actually pretty high for its size, making it suitable for small and compact electronic projects. Take note that connecting batteries in series or parallel with different capacity is not a good idea. So if you're planning to build a battery pack from this, each cell's capacity should be very close to the other cells for safety reasons because this can cause fire if mishandled. So I would recommend to use them alone for small projects. Now we'll proceed with their internal circuitry, starting with the bigger model. So what makes it useful is that bigger vapes charge pretty fast with a very sensitive sensor for its activation. And here's the chip responsible for the display and the charging. And since this module charge at around 1 amp, just like the TP4056, with an advantage of having a charge percentage display, this module will be a good replacement to the TP4056 to charge lithium batteries. And this microphone looking component is actually some kind of capacity sensor. And there's a chip inside of it that out outputs high signal to the mainboard if its sense pin changes capacitance. So the capacitance on the sense pin is affected by the movement of this diaphragm with a vacuum from the outside. So you can actually make this as a capacitive touch switch. And since the sensor outputs high for activation, pulling that pin high on the motherboard will activate the display and the output, but only for a limited amount of time. As for the smaller and cheaper model, everything is handled by this module, both the charging and the switching. And because of its very small size, it charges slower as well. Probably around 200 to 300 milliamps, which makes it suitable for charging small capacity batteries. Now, TP4056 charging current can be modified by its program resistor, but TP4056 will be too big for smaller projects. Now, this module operates just like the previous sensor. You can actually add a wire to its sense pin to convert it into a touch switch. But there's still a time limit for its on state, probably to prevent the user from sucking the whole thing. Seems like vape manufacturers have some care for their customers. <laughs> so that's pretty much all of it. I hope you enjoyed watching this nonsense. But if it did, give it a like and we'll do something else for the next one.